Hello. So in this video, we're going to look at how to troubleshoot a Codasys connection to the display. So in our previous videos, we have our, our training project uh, one open here, which we've been using. We've developed a basic application. And in the last videos, we looked at connecting to a display here. So in my case, I have a VA display connected and we looked at you know how to add a new gateway and, and what to select for that gateway. So in my case, if I go gateway one, I can say scan network up here. And this is going to scan for a codices runtime on the network. So the first thing that I mentioned is you have to make sure that you can connect to your display. So connect to it via an IP address and you know a, a good way to test that connection is from your Windows machine is through PuTTY. So we've talked about that in other videos. So for me when I say scan network we'll see gateway one which I just scanned and for me I see the VA Linux display and that's because I can successfully connect to my display and everything is is good on my side but there are cases where you will scan and you don't see this display there's nothing here so usually there's a couple different things that can cause you not to be able to connect to the runtime so the first thing to check is your gateway and we talked a bit about this in the first connection video so Right here, I, I have, by default, your gateway is going to be set to localhost. For the ARM-based displays, so the VA, VC, XA, and XS displays currently, the localhost should work where you scan the network and you should see it if it's an ARM-based display. If it's an x86-based display, so our XM or XL displays, you will likely have to add a gateway and configure that gateway to be the IP address of your display. So 192.168.0.2 for my own display. I've already actually done that. So I have gateway two set up here, which is 192.168.0.2, the IP address of my display. And if I scan the network even on this, even though it's an ARM display, I can still see my device here. So that's that's good. But the x86 based displays, if you try to scan at localhost, it will just show nothing. But if you add your gateway to be the IP address of the display, then you should see it pop up. It, if you are using an ARM based display and you don't see it under localhost, I would add the gateway to the IP address of your display just in case and try it just to make sure that that's not the issue. So if you've done that and it's not your gateway that's that's causing you not to see it, then there are two likely issues. First being that you don't have the Codasys runtime installed on the displays. So Codasys, to install a Codasys runtime, it is a licensed software, which means that we don't install it on all of our displays as a default. It needs to be ordered from our factory with Codasys because there's an additional cost to the license. So you can tell on your display if you have it installed in a couple ways. So the first most obvious way is on the back of your display, if you've ordered that display with Codasys, you should see a, a gold Codasys sticker on the back of your display. And that indicates that the hardware was ordered with the Codasys license installed on it. So if you don't have that sticker on the back, then that likely indicates that you've not ordered the display with Codasys. So that could be an issue. We can confirm that though by actually logging into our display and checking a few things. So we're going to open up PuTTY here and log into our display. 
So if you don't know how to connect or log into the display, there's other videos online. You know, right here, I'm in the display video training and, you know, it tells you how to connect via dynamic IP, uh, setting a stam static IP and connecting. So check out those videos um, in Windows tools. There's one about putty. But here we are on the display and I'm going to type root is the password or the username and SUS root is the password. If I spell it right. Okay, so I'm in the display now. So what I'm going to type to check to see if Codasys is running is I'm going to type PS. Okay, and this will bring the list of processes that are running on the display. So what you're looking for is here. If Codasys is running, you should see this Codasys control process running. You may also see this Codasys launch. So this is the actual application process running on the display. So this is my, my application running, but if you don't have an application, you may just see this one. So yeah, you're, you're looking for this. If you don't see Codasys control on the display, then that's a pretty sure indicator that Codasys is not installed on your display or for some reason has not correctly started. If you're using an x86 display, uh, like an XM, I believe you have to use top to TOP instead of PS to look for uh, the Codasys control functions. And you can get out of top, if you do type top, you can get out of it with control C. So top will show you uh, the process is running, but it'll show you the CPU and, and things it's using. Uh, okay, another check, we can go to the opt directory of the display with CD space forward slash opt and type LS and displays with codices on them should have this codices control folder in that op directory. So if, if you don't see a codices control process running on your display and you don't have this folder, then you don't have codices installed and that is your problem. So please contact cross control support to figure out um, why you don't have it installed if it was ordered with Codasys or if you made a mistake and did not order the display with Codasys, uh, you'll, you'll have to contact cross control support and see how we can get that runtime onto the displays. Okay, the, the second reason that this may not be showing up in scan network is if you're if you do have the runtime, the Codasys runtime running on your display, so you see this process coming up and you see your Codasys control folder here, then you have it installed, but you don't, if you still don't see the display popping up, then this indicates that most likely there's a version mismatch issue between your device description in your Codasys tool and the version of the runtime on the display. So first we're, we're going to double click this device here and say information. And this tells us the, the version of the device description on built into our Codasys development environment. So essentially this tells Codasys how to compile the code for the display. So these, this version and the runtime version on the display need to match. So first off, we can, if you know, for instance, that this is the wrong version, you can change the version of the device by right clicking and saying update device. Okay, so here we'll see all of the different device descriptions that I have installed. Now you will note 
that I only, like here I have the XA3542, but it may not be showing all of my versions. So if you look down here, there's a checkbox that says display all versions. And now I get a lot more versions of the XA or ARM, this, you know, the XA device description, as I've noted in previous videos, works for all of our ARM displays. So the VC, VA, XA, XS displays. While the XM uh, device descriptions work for all of the x86 based displays. So the XM and XL. All right, so we'll see over here on the right, the version of the device description. So by default, if I don't display this, Codasys takes the name and the vendor and just shows you and will default to the highest version that it has available for you. But that may not always be the version you want to use. So you want to click all displays and specifically select the version that you know is installed on the display. So in my case, I know 3542 is installed on the display, so I'm going to double click this. It updates my device description and, you know, if I were to not see this before, but let's, let's uh, actually change this to a, a bad one, right? So if I right click and say update device and I select a device description that for instance is like greater than the version I have installed on the display. So I have 3542 installed, but if I select version 350, well, I guess that would be older, <laughs> a lot older. Let's uh, select, oh, there we go. Three, five, yeah, well, okay, so a lot older version, three, five, or three, four, four, zero. If I select that, for instance, I can see in my information, I'm at three, four, four, zero. And if I now select scan network, you'll notice nothing comes up, okay, because the runtime and the device description file I'm trying to connect to are incompatible. It doesn't see anything that is compatible with it on the gateway. So this is how it could look if you guys have a, a version mismatch. So if I move this, go back here, uh, move it back to 3542, then our problem should be solved. So now we're back and I see the Linux version. Okay, so, so that's one of the, the reasons that, you know, you could not see your devices showing up. So how do we tell what versions are installed here? So there are two ways. So we can come to the uh, opt packages folder. So CD opt packages and hit LS and we will see the version of Codasys that's installed. And actually we'll see the version of a lot of different things that are installed. So this can be useful to determine the versions of installed packages for other things as well. But you'll see Codasys Visu ARM device 35422 underscore two is installed. The important part is this 354.2. So you'll notice, you know, here, that is the version of the runtime or the device description I'm using. In my tools, 3542, and on the display is 3542. So if you have a different version on your display, then you can do two things. You can either downgrade or upgrade, you know, so match the, come here and say update, as we did before, update device, to match the version that you have on your display, or you could install an additional, an updated or down downgraded runtime on your display. So this is just gonna depend on mostly probably what your application's developed in. You know, if you've developed your application in a certain runtime and you know, it may or may not be easily downgraded or upgraded in the development environment to that runtime. So a lot of times you might want to 
downgrade or upgrade the runtime on the display to match what's in your development environment, but you really could do either one. So, um, yeah, I think that that covers most of it. So in, in summation, you want to make sure that your gateway settings are correct here. So if you're using ARM localhost, if you're using x86, make sure the IP address is located here. You know, even if you're using ARM, try the IP address if it's not working. Next, check to make sure your runtime is running on the device. So you have this Codasys control process running and uh, your Codasys control folder located in the opt directory of the displays will tell you if Codasys is installed. And then lastly, you want to make sure that the device description version and the runtime version on your displays match. All right, hopefully that should help troubleshooting. Of course, if you have issues beyond what I've gone over here, please contact Codasys or Cross Control Support and we will help you out. Thank you.